We're still in our discussion of the analysis of two categorical variables. Today we're going to be looking at a form of statistical inference or hypothesis testing for a contingency table. So when you do a hypothesis test for a contingency table, you're looking for a relationship between two variables or two categorical variables. Here we're looking at therapy and cancer. So this was an actual study that was done in 2002 looking at postmenopausal women and whether or not hormone replacement was affecting whether these women did or did not have cancer. So when we do this hypothesis test, they decided in 2002 to halt this study. We're going to see if that was an accurate decision. So when you start, you'll first identify the population. So here our population is going to be all postmenopausal women. So that is going to be the group that we're trying to make an inference on, but we're going to be basing that on a sample of, as you can see over here, we have a total of 16,608. So our sample will be just the 16,608 postmenopausal women that are in the study. So this is the group that we're trying to make an inference on, that population are all postmenopausal women, and we're going to be basing that decision on the 16,608 who were included in the study. Now when we look at step two, we're going to be writing our null and alternative hypotheses. So you'll notice that in step one, I didn't write a parameter definition. So we have no null value that we're interested in. Here instead, we're going to be looking at whether or not there's a relationship. So the null hypothesis is always a statement of nothing happening or no relationship. So here we will have there is no relationship. And then we'll state our two variables. So no relationship between therapy type and cancer. So again, remember H sub O, there is no relationship. And our alternative is a statement of something happening or a relationship. So here, the only thing that will change is that we'll say there is a relationship between therapy and cancer. So unlike the hypothesis test that we've been looking at in the past, here we have no null value and we have no parameter that we're defining. In this type of hypothesis test, we want to see if there is a relationship. So our alternative is that there is a relationship between our two variables, whereas the null will be there is no relationship. So looking at step three, we're going to start with the testing. And whenever you start a testing step in a hypothesis test, you first have to state your assumption. So here when we're doing a test or a hypothesis test on a contingency table, our assumption is that the sampling distribution of the chi-square statistic has a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom being, remember, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. So here we have two rows because we have two therapy types, hormone versus placebo, times the number of columns minus one, yes or no cancer. So for a two by two contingency table, you will always have one degree of freedom. Now when we check conditions, remember they're fairly in depth and they're based explicitly on expected counts. It's important to remember that because all of the cells have both observed and expected, but conditions for these problems are based on expected counts. So there's actually two portions to it. When you check conditions, you have to have less than 20% of cells can have an expected count less than five. Now because our table is a two by two table, each cell actually will make up 25% and less than 20% or actually none of these expected counts are less than five. So that meets our conditions. And remember that no expected count um, is less than one. 
So with these problems, less than 20% of cells can have an expected count less than five and no expected count can be less than one. Since up here in our table, you can see our smallest expected count is 141.5. That verifies that our conditions are met. Since our conditions are met, the assumption that we made in letter A is verified. So now we'll calculate our test statistic, which remember here is a chi-squared test statistic. So that will take all of the observed counts minus the expected count for each cell and divide by the corresponding expected. So here we're calculating a chi-square and for each cell we're going to take the observed. So if I start with that cell hormone and no cancer, I have an observed of 8,340 minus the expected of 8,357.5 I square that difference and then divide by that expected. So I will do this for each cell and then they will be summed. So then moving over to therapy being hormone and yes cancer, I have an observed of 166 minus an expected of 148.5 divided by 148.5 after I square it. Then I will continue. Now I'm moving down to the placebo with no cancer. So I have an observed of 7,978 minus the expected 7,960.5. I'm gonna square that difference and then divide by the expected. So my very last cell, I have an observed of 124 minus 141.5, squaring that difference and then dividing by that corresponding expected. So if I were to calculate each of these values, I will do that before I add them all. So those results would come out to be 0 0.04 plus 2.06 plus another 0 0.04 and then I would have 2.16. So my resulting chi-squared is equal to approximately 4.3. So that's the test statistic. Now we're going to move into step four, which is going to be finding a p-value connected to this test statistic. So now in step four, we're going to be figuring out what our p-value is or the probability connecting to getting the results we did in step three or something more extreme. So first in the decision making, you have to state your test statistic distribution. Because we calculated a chi-square test statistic, that's the distribution we're working with. And if you remember from step three, we had just one degree of freedom. So now we're going to use the calculator to find a p-value connected to this curve, so the chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom, and then also using that test statistic that we found in step three. So our chi-squared is equal to 4.3. I'm going to find the probability of having that result or something more extreme. So using the calculator, we're going to use the chi-square CDF function and then within the chi-square CDF function, remember that with these curves, we're going to go from our test statistic up to positive infinity. So that's the more extreme area. So we'll have 4.3 up to positive infinity. And for all intents and purposes, the calculator can handle 999 for infinity. And then we'll add one degree of freedom. So chi-square up to positive infinity for the one degree of freedom curve. So what you will find then in Step four, letter B, is a p-value equal to 0 0.038. So because that's so small, we're going to make the decision to reject the null. So remember, when a p-value is small, meaning it's less than a given level of alpha, and for the universal value of alpha, we have 0 0.05, you make the decision to reject the null. Whenever you reject the null, the beginning of your statement in step five will be there is sufficient. So remember that that goes with reject evidence 
to suggest, and then we're going to restate our alternative. So if you remember from the paragraph, there's sufficient evidence to suggest there is a relationship between therapy and cancer. So back in 2002, when they saw that that result was um, true, that there was a relationship, they decided to stop using hormone replacement on postmenopausal women because it seemed like it was affecting whether or not they were getting cancer.